Now, it just so happened that probably Navy didn't get the message that a ceasefire, a temporary ceasefire had been announced by the Indian Air Force. Anyway, they were cleared for the next morning to mm -hmm. land their one C-130. This aircraft landed on a short uh, stretch, which was repaired about seven to 800 yards, and picked up these passengers, the foreigners, and took off. That was the only interruption which took place for any aircraft from outside to come and land at Dhaka. Now, that was the turning point for the war, because now the Indian army could move freely. Uh, yeah, without any air attack in, from in, this. In, in day and night, and also on the roads. They didn't have to hide themselves on the uh, footpaths and uh, other tracks. So the speed of movement of this increased, of our troops increased, and we were heading faster to Dhaka. Now, this also made it possible that Dhaka was capturable. Earlier, it was thought that with the Pakistani Air Force interfering, they will not be able to reach Dhaka and capture it before some kind of resolution from the United Nations Security Council came. It became possible now. Uh, that was the step, and the Indian Army regularly got full support from the Indian Air Force, and they advanced, and finally, reached outskirts of Jharkhand after about on by about 12th of December. Now the issue came. Pakistanis knew they cannot escape from East Pakistan because the borders were sealed. Runways, no aircraft could have could come to Dhaka and go from here and escape from by from the sea was also blocked by the Indian Navy. But they still had enough ammunition and manpower to continue fighting for some longer time. Okay. But the pressure on Niazi was that Sagat Singh's, General Sagat Singh's number four command had already encircled Dhaka city. And from the paradox which had taken place on the 11th of December, had also reached about 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers away from Dhaka. So the entry of the Indians into Dhaka city and of the Mukti Bahani and the guerrillas of uh, East Pakistan was imminent. Okay. And it scared the wits out of Pakistan army and the supporters of Pakistan. That if Mukti Bani arrives before the Indian army, before the uh, Indian army comes, they will be utter massacre, genocide. Yeah. And none, none of them will be left alive because what they done to the East Pakistanis earlier could not be forgotten. So they had to now make up their mind whether they want to surrender or want to keep on fighting and expose themselves to Mukti Bani and uh, the other East Pakistani guerrillas. For that, a meeting was being held on 14th February to take the decision on this by the civil government. Okay. So the governor of uh, Pakistan had called for this meeting at Dhaka. Sir. Now this the transmission of the radio or the communication was intercepted by the Indian intelligence and conveyed to the headquarters. The headquarters thought that it is very proper to attack uh, this meeting when it's taking place and to help them in making up their mind to surrender as fast as possible. Okay. So they called up Guwahati Airfield and told the station commander through Eastern Air Command to mount an attack while the meeting is taking place in Dhaka. Now I was told by the station commander who's waiting for me on that particular morning as I returned from an earlier mission. And he said, Vishnoi, there is a very important mission. There is a meeting taking place, chaired by the governor of East Pakistan and attended by the army brass and the bureaucrat and some, some ambassadors, ambassadors of, also. of the other countries. And it has to be attacked at 1200 hours sharp. Yeah. Meeting, meeting is likely to start about 11.30. Okay. So I looked at the watch. I said, sir, it's 11.15 already. Already, okay. Already, I have 45 minutes from now till my rockets hit the target. Dhaka is 300 kilometers away. It will take us 22 minutes to reach there. I have to prepare the aircraft. I have to prepare the maps, etc., and brief the pilots. It doesn't appear that it's, it's possible to make it on mm -hmm. the timeline given by you. Yeah. He, he shook his head. He said, 
भूख देर इज जस्ट नो ऑल्टरनेटिव यू यू वी हैव टू डू इट आई सेड आई आई सर एंड आई क्विकली कॉट ओल्ड ऑफ एन अदर थ्री पायलट हैड दी एयरक्राफ्ट प्रिपेयर ब्रीफ दैम एंड कॉट इन टू दी एयरक्राफ्ट I think every time you are only leading, sir. Normally, or does uh, it always, happen that way, or because of your no, no, it just happened that uh, I was coming back from the unit. <laughs> other aircraft were flying already, and uh, station commander had reached that time to my squadron. So sir. he saw me first, and uh, probably he wanted me to lead it. I do not know. Sir. I mean, because he wanted someone responsible for this responsible Import, important task, mission. Task, important, important mission. Sir. Anyway, so as I te- was taxing out, I saw from a distance one air. After running towards my aircraft, waving his hand with a paper in it, I stopped, opened the canopy. He, when he came close to the aircraft, he said, "Sir, there's a change in target." Okay. I was surprised. Mm-hmm. To beg your pardon, change in target? What's that? He says, "Sir, now the target is not the circuit house which is given to you. It is governor's house." Now I have not seen the governor's house on the map. <laughs> okay. We had studied the circuit house during the briefing and Brief. all that, but mm-hmm. where where the hand was a uh, This new place. So mm. I asked him. He said, mm. "Where is this circuit, circuit house? Where is, the, where is this governor's house?" He shook his head. He said, "Sir, I don't know. There's only one map which is with you. You look it up." Now we were running short of time because we start up the aircraft only depending on what is the target on time on the target. So there was no time to switch off, rebrief the pilots, and take off again. So I kept quiet. Didn't inform the other three formation, uh, exactly. three leaders with me, the uh, three uh, pilots with me. and we took off again flying very low towards dhaka after about 2 or 3 minutes of setting the course i pulled out this map from my pocket this was a tourist map of indian oil indian oil okay or it was burma burma, burma shell type one of these i think burma shell not indian oil exactly. and i started searching for the governor's house i went over the map all over left right center behind it even but i didn't find the governor's house written anywhere else anywhere on that map Mm. Either it was in the list, the very important buildings and the structures uh, in Dhaka. Now panic was setting in that I am heading for a target which I don't know where it is, and if right. I don't find it, what happens? Mm. There is so much of hope with the Indian Air Force, sir, and the reputation of my squadron is also at stake. stake. Yes, sir. If I go back empty-handed, two minutes later I again pulled out this map. And now I started looking not for Governor House but anything which could resemble it. So going over it, I found a place. Okay. Suddenly, it was a government house, and this government house was south of the Dhaka airfield, about twenty thirty kilometers away. And uh, after confirming that they know that the place which looks like the target that we are going for, I decided to investigate this government house. Okay. Then we reach. Dhaka airfield. I saw the Dhaka airfield on my right. Now the first time I called up on the RT and informed the other formation members that there is a change in target, which is not circuit house anymore. It is the government house, and it should appear on your left, some distance away. Please look out for it. Little later, number three called up. He said, "Sir, look on left, eleven o'clock, four kilometers. There seems to be a building which looks like a big official setup." I looked at it. Yes. It had big, huge grounds. The building had a, a dome like we have in Rashtrapati Bhavan in Delhi. Okay. Okay. It was one of the large buildings. And when I looked all around there, I found nothing else but that. Okay. And I decided that this was our target. Okay. So I asked the formation for line of turn. Line of turn means in line behind each other, about a kilometer or so, and get in the attack mode on this building. I said we'll attack the governor house from the broad side. From north to south. Okay. We went past. We, we were we were already on southerly heading. We went past uh, this building, turned around 180 degrees, and got into the attack. Okay. I aimed my first set of rockets, 16 rockets, at the dome. I considered that this dome was like Rashtrapati Bhavan. Having the conference hall below it. So mm-hmm. if, if, if yeah, I hit yeah, below it, that's normally the place. Yes. Yes. If I that hit, place. if the target, if the weapons hit below the uh, dome, they are bound to get into the conference hall. I told the other pilots to select their uh, targets evenly, and we went in for the attack. My 16 rockets aimed at the bottom of this big dome, hit right on top of the roof below the dome. Oh, that's great! Very and great. they. penetrated through it without leaving much of smoke and fire and all that 
Similarly, other three aircraft fired. Now we still had 16 rockets more left, so we came in for the second attack. Sir. And this time we fired at the rest of the building, which was not throwing up debris and smoke. And the end of it, we pulled up to return back home. Now it will be surprising that what happened after the rockets hit the governor house. As soon as the rockets hit the governor house and the conference hall, the governor of East Pakistan ran from his chair to the nearest trench outside the building, jumped into it. So did some other people, including the American, to the American consulate there next to him. Mr. Malik, the governor, bent, pulled out a hanky from his pocket, put it on his head, bent down on his knees and said his namaz. And soon after the namaz came the second attack of our world with rest of the building. rockets crashing into the building. He was, he was shaking with the, the shaking hands. He asked for a pen and a paper and wrote his resignation from the oh. governorship of East Pakistan and his okay. cabinet. Okay, okay. Now there were no civil government left in East mm. Pakistan and it was only General Niazi who was in control the East Pakistan. General Yazi said he had enough men and ammunition to fight for next three months. Okay. And, and he'll fight to the last bullet and the Indian army will walk over into Dhaka only on my dead body. Okay. Very I brief. saw his uh, video clippings also. He was so arrogant while, while, while speaking also. Oh, he was we, no, he was very arrogant and uh, he, he very brave words he said which were expected out of him. Sir. Now, same afternoon, 14th, General Niazi left the cantonment area because he is being harassed in and out by the air, Indian Air Force, firing at his headquarters and the Sir. other surroundings. Sir. And he moved in with his troops into Dhaka University area. Mm. Okay. You know, Dhaka University was vacated by the students by then. And we came to know through our intelligence that he has done so. Now we got the orders to attack the Dhaka University where, okay. where the general had shifted mm -hmm. with, all, with all his might. Sir. Now, Dhaka University was a low building amongst the surrounding of tall buildings. Okay. We had to dive and fire with the tall building on top of us. Okay. I could see the people waving to us from top as okay. we were firing onto these buildings. Okay. Now, I called it the mixed fighting, the street fight in Dhaka. Okay. Because we had to fly through the narrow lanes in between the tall building and Dhaka University to mm. reach our target. Okay. So we blasted that in the afternoon of 14th and again 15th morning. At the same time, some hunters also from 37th Squadron and 17th Squadron had attacked the university area. Okay. As a result, that now Niazi was in sheer panic because he could not escape anywhere. Outside the country, he couldn't go, go because Indian army and navy were surrounding it or inside, we were not letting them okay. fight. Now, he approached the Americans for arranging a ceasefire immediately. Okay, okay. Anyway, uh, that took quite some time for them and it was also broadcasted by Field Marshal Maniksha on the radio mm -hmm. asking, dropping the pamphlets, etc. to asking them to surrender and surrender. promising them to be treated under Geneva condition, Geneva Convention and assuring them that they will be safe and be able to go back home someday. And with that, General Jacob arrived at Dhaka and arranged to accept a ceasefire. On 16th, the ceasefire was signed at 13, at 4, at 4, 4 past 31 minutes Sir. in Dhaka city. General Niazi signed the surrender instrument in the presence of General Arora. Sir. And that put the shutters down on 1971 war. Now, as after the uh, Mr. General Niazi had signed the instrument of surrender, one journalist asked him, he said, General, you had said only just 40 hours earlier that Indian army will walk in to Dhaka over your dead body. And now today you are signing the surrender. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. General Niazi got up from his chair, group captain of the Indian Air Force, Chandan Singh, Chandan Singh yes. was, was there. And he turned and put his finger on the wing he was wearing on his uniform. And he said, this is what has made me surrender. Surrender, <laughs> okay. I, 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 he said, I have not slept for the last 12 days. Okay. Because 
day time we are busy with the operation at night the air force won't let us sleep because even our caribou's the transport aircraft would drop in the bombs to oh. dhaka at night to keep them awake and i must say that that was a great compliment by the rival commander general yes rival, to the rival, to the indian air force rival general to the indian air force it's really great sir great it's great and uh, with that well i i would say that our contribution was at these two crucial stages when we knocked off the dhaka runway to get rid of the pakistan air force first place and accelerate our advance toward uh, dhaka and the last to help the pakistan government to make up their mind to surrender in time before much damage was done was done to the remaining forces in east pakistan and gentlemen with that i conclude as far the my contribution towards or our my squadron's contribution uh, towards the war war sir and with that i will say and leave the house open for any questions you might have as sub to your sir to the such a, a brilliant idea which was felt skeptical by even the saso level later on with your persistent efforts convinced them and also perfectly executed till on the dot kind of thing so i think you have been or you had been in the thick of the action during the, those uh, 13 or 14 days within which that war was fought and really it i think being the leader of all the formations every time you were leading the sorties from the front and showing your uh, leadership qualities at the right time taking right decisions and also making them happen i think uh, you deserve a lot of honor from the not only from us all the air veterans also from the entire nation sir and which proved uh, definitely the superiority of the indian uh, air force over pakistan air force by your consistent efforts so really i think so so far we have been listening to the stories of so many war heroes but i think for the first time we heard the stories of a leader of a war heroes so uh, how he navigated through these uh, difficult challenging times and tasted a great success for indian air force thank, thank you so much sir from our uh, air veterans association uh, for uh, listening to your great story of inspiration and the entire nation owes their uh, debt to you and your valor and your leadership skills i th- i thank you for the good words said by you but yeah. i must also add that it was not only me in that operations who performed all squadrons did equally well to yeah. the task allotted to them there was no kind of failure we lost lives we lost aircraft no two is about it that's part of the game that's yes, part sir. of war yeah. but no one shirked from the duties or performed in the manner in which is not expected to perform and yes, as, and it the victory in east is a combined effort a joint effort of all not only in the air force and the navy and army put in together yes sir so now how did you feel about the success sir uh, particularly of your personal success being the part of the leader and also the success of your your particular squadron which played a major role in winning the war for us well the squadron got the battle honors for the operation in 1971 sir. awarded by on a parade by the president of india oh that is really great so it was to fully recognize that the our effort was fully recognized and sir. appreciated similarly all the other pilots were duly awarded veer chakra yes sir mentioned in the speeches yes sir and other certificates so so were the men who worked so hard right. and who were the basis for our success in the war i have said in my earlier yes sir uh, this yeah, course the said. last time that yeah. without them we could not have won the war or we couldn't thank have you for acknowledging the efforts of men also sir no it is not acknowledged it is sir. my due sir. Uh, duty sir. to be thankful to them yes sir of course collective for effort contri- what for their contribution towards sir. the nation any questions now so now uh, sir uh, now we have our group of das sir wing commander karnik sir they are also on the call sir uh, das sir if you would like to ask any questions no questions hats off to bishnu sir for his leadership <laughs> great really great right. so thank you das sir another uh, longowala veer chakra holder of longowala battle so we have another hero sir our uh, wing commander karnik sir another veer chakra holder in the 71 war Yes, sir. Can you, sir? Yes. Thank you very much, Air Marshal, sir. 
for so very nicely and vividly describing the all the events that have taken place and your role therein and certainly i mean uh, the last straw in the camel's back does the say the governor house attack led to the situation where they had really no choice in any respect but to surrender hats off to you and your leadership particularly as a squad commander thank you so much sir kash yeah. kanik thank you very much for the nice words and uh, we have known each other for very long yes yes of course sir and uh, uh, well i always kind of appreciated the way you worked and the way you uh, thought of the indian air force yes. and uh, <laughs> similar and most of us I, i will add to it that if i were given chance in the next birth to choose my profession i'll come back to the indian air force again so that's a great tribute to air force sir and we salute your spirit also so yes sir we have another uh, 70 so many 71 war days today we have vinkavada quatra sir another vid chakra holder of 71 war yes sir who, who has been a regular participant also we have a group eight and goyans also yes sir quatra sir if you can uh, unmute good, speak. Uh, good evening vishnoi sir beautifully you have taken us down in the memory lane of 71 war it was great listening to you thank you very much i <laughs> must clap and hats off to you <laughs> yes sir <laughs> thank you so very much now so, if no one has asked any question i'll ask question to myself and answer you <laughs> okay sir ah. we have two more uh, two more sir now vinkavada krishnamurthy sir is there who has witnessed to the surrender ceremony yes sir krishnamurthy sir we can always see his photo in the surrender ceremony good evening partner. good evening everyone and a special one to the hero of the evening air marshal bishnoi sir Air Marshal Bishnoi was our AOC when I was in Hindon. Okay. And from there on, we went to Kalaikonda Air Headquarters, Antarctica, and registered. Now, what I want to say at this juncture is, he has brought us beautifully to Dhaka on the attack of the Governor's bungalow. Now we must position ourselves like in the chessboard. The Hathi comes and attacks, and the small little fellows are waiting on the side. General Sagat Singh and Chandan Singh are waiting there. and the moment they heard that attack has taken place he said cross now we cross the meghna <laughs> yeah great <And> lord <laughs> so this was a small little tip given to us do they are ready to do so that is way our part comes in the helicopter part comes in the actual surrender so we were waiting for this kind of a thing to happen and very rightfully we call it in the english last straw this was not a straw it was a lethal blow to the east pakistan army and the governor and the moment it happened we just crossed over people walked across and only it was a matter of few minutes hours for the gentleman to sign and hand over the entire east pakistan to us thank you so much sir for the beautiful narration and as quatra sahab said he took us along in the aircraft to dhaka thank you so much sir i, I must apologize for not having I said much about the helicopter heli operation because <laughs> they wanted much time but now since you have brought this issue i would like to say that it was the heli operations in the east which were a novel novelty for our operation and very imaginatively and constructively done it put so much of a pressure on niazi and the pakistani forces that they were left with no choice our boys were fin- uh, tremendous in their guts in their daring and in their motivation to work day and night to lift heavy vehicles armament and thousands of troops across the mighty rivers of east pakistan i would consider that as far as the effort is concerned and the produce is concerned is no less than ours in the fighters what we did and i stand to thank them and recognize their effort Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In fact, no, we had the stories, personal experiences of our wing commander uh, Krishna Murthy, sir, squadron Vijay, sir, and air commodore Sridharan, sir. So about the Magna crossing and special helibona operations, the way they supported army and expedited success for us. So we should always be grateful to all those heroes also. So now we have uh, one more person, sir, who depicted your story, also showed your photos. <laughs> Group captain, <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> sir. so though you have taken us you have showed us the mental movie the way you had we have uh, narrated your personal experience or goyan sir also in fact depicted the, that one 
in the form of a creative art so sir uh, for your uh, comments bro can go ahead sir uh, thank you tbr with permission of uh, bishnoi sir can i show those three three paintings yeah please uh, share do the screen <laughs> i'll do uh, that i'll add something to it yeah yes, it's sir, a yes. great you, honor sir it's a great that purpose. you have made a great painting and uh, if someone explains what you have painted yes, and sir. what you try, what you are trying to say like i would like to do it yes so like what well. because, because I, i saw those uh, scenes happen with my own eyes in the sky so for example you have shown attack on gunner's house you have discussed with me i on this issue i gave you that exactly how we did and what we did and all that but anyone just looking at your painting would not appreciate that to the extent that i and you would like them to do it so please yes. write some notes or some kind of caption under your painting to yes. give some background to it yeah yeah that's uh, i think it... to make it a representation of what exactly happened and when it happened yes tai we heard you in guwahati tbr can you see this painting I'm yeah we can see sir now. we can see you can tell yes yeah bishnu uh, sir will tell the first story he told us about uh, dadu subaya's uh, combat over dhaka yeah this is the one sir uh, this is the one there is the one and dadu subaya was my instructor and he guided me also to make this painting oh wonderful sir wonderful. To, the, to the extent of you know the angle of and what angle of was he Okay, and okay. How how the, if you see this uh, here? Here is it. Here is that. Here is gone. Yeah, this is a part of Dhaka. It is the the and okay. this is the saber, sir. And this is Dadu Subaya. So it's uh, and, going to shoot. And yes. it is not only Dadu Subaya. It was a person who had no fuel on board. Correct. Yes. So keen to shoot down the saber that he risked his life. Okay, so, great, sir. Great. So let me show the next one that Mr. Uh, Sir had uh, say as uh, described. Yes. This, this this is the one i think it is, this is about the uh, bishnoi sir's attack on the tejgaon airfield the oh. all the bombs that he fell when i this is the one if you, you see this is the number one who's pulling up acha he is pulling up and the others are in action yes sir others are this, the another number 2 yes sir 3 4 four aircraft sir and these are the bombs which are falling over there already fallen and yes sir Yeah, this expo bomb bomb falling and exploding. A beautiful sir, beautiful presentation. So, I think if uh, Bishnoi sir wants to add two things, on yeah, to I would add. like to add something, sir. This is exactly where if I close my eyes, I will see. Okay, <laughs> I think he has got a vivid memory also, sir. The way he expressed. Yes, actually, the Bishnoi sir told me when I made the first painting on the, on the government house, he said you must make this. This is the one which is the game changer. Yeah, yeah, really, sir, really. Now both the um, things, both are so crucial for the winning the war. One is crippling the India, Pakistan air force by uh, bombing the uh, this one uh, airport, and second one is of course that the government building. Both yeah, this were so is the, crucial. The I think and uh, next one I I'll, I'll uh, saying uh, that this is the one on government house attack on government house. That's what uh, uh, you know published in our uh, our uh, Pataksar book also. Same. Yeah, this, this is the one. Our page. Yeah, on the uh, head page. Yes. See, this, so this is the, this is the number one. Number one is attacked and pulled up. This is the so-called government house, which sir. is in a dome. Sir. You can see part of the dome. And yes, sir. Yes, the sir. Rockets are being fired. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Right. He number two. You can say number three and number four are. Yes, sir. They are following. Are, yeah, they are following. These are three paintings of the crucial uh, operations of 1971 flown by. Bishnoi sir, under his leadership, all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We should appreciate his leadership skills. Absolutely. A brilliant Absolutely. idea. And um, I, I, um, TBI too for the uh, audience two sir. three things because I have flown MiG twenty one the same MiG twenty one I have flown, sir. And I have also done a few of the bombing sorties. But to fi- say that all four aircraft dropped eight bombs on the runway right from the um, from the beginning till end, it is amazing. I don't think it has happened. <laughs> I think I, it's I a unique. Say, it's I a can unique make it event. happen. I mean, that to any war. when there is a lot of ground fire and apprehension and despite the opinion of the sasso kind of thing they were also skeptical whether we could do it, they could do it or not but they did it that, that exactly course, they, they but, planned uh, finally they finally they operate the pilots have to drop the drone uh, and one more thing is uh, one we must realize when mig 21s came to india they were not bombers they were purely okay. interceptors acha they were not the bombers be useful and and the same aircraft Wing Commander Bishnu at that time and his boys used to drop it so accurately, so accurately that <laughs> Pakistanis thought there there's some kind of Russian bomb, special bomb, you know, retarder bombs. 
which specially were obtained by India at that time, which was not, it was just a free fall bomb. Amazing. This is, uh, I mean, really, sir, really, really. There's no word to describe this. So, for, for his you know, brilliance and intelligence and execution, planning, everything so meticulous and uh, really, uh, we are all speechless the way you express it, sir. I, as if you were seeing a kind of movie. <laughs> yeah. When I went to Dhaka on uh, next morning after the surrender, I met, I did not met, one Russian came to me. Sir. And he said, I was in, uh, still in overall, in the flying overall. Sir. And uh, he said, Vajud, one of the pilots flying the mix? I said, yes. He said, ask me, what gun side did you use? And the weapon guiding system. Okay. <laughs> I said, uh, uh, may I know who you are? He said, I am so-and-so coming from Russia. the uh, high commissioner's office. Okay. So, so he said, I asked him, he said, well, you asking me the question that which gun site and weapon system we used, you gave us the aircraft, you gave us the equipment, including mm -hmm. the gun site and mm -hmm. the bombs we used. Mm -hmm. Why ask this question to me now? He looked at me. He said, really? It was so consistent and shook his head and walked away from me. <laughs> I think it was unbelievable to him as well, the way you executed the things. I said to you, sir, really, we are proud of you. Achha, now, it was, it was a fixed Sorry, site. Carry on. <laughs> it was a fixed site. This never had a gyro site. It was the most rudimentary of the sites. It is just like this is just like firing from a 303 rifle with a ring <laughs> and with a pin at the nose of the Absolutely. rifle. So the, the, that is the capability of the persons like you who used it <laughs> with that rudimentary kind of thing, making it such a big thing for us. Yeah. So yes, sir, Patek sir, you wanted to share something? Yeah, that's why I told the men behind machine matters. Yeah, always, people. always. Our pilots were so superior to them. Yeah, so absolutely, all absolutely. All conditions they were operated and uh, brought the great success to us. I must thank Vishnu sir very much, and I'm sorry I had been. Calling him every now and then and traveling in <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Hey, in fact, he, you were efforts. he did not only grace our occasion of Hyderabad meeting function, but he has given two excellent this one patience to us. I am very much thankful on behalf of group to him and wish him all the best, sir. Now, Mr. Thank Rao, you. sir, sir. Mr. Mr. Rao, if there are no more questions, uh, is Mrs. Benegal still there? Uh, uh, Madam Benegal. I think she has left. She has left. Oh, okay, I fine. Mean, she is up. not there. Because, because my wife was there to say hello to her after. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. After half a century. Sir, sir, I will share that number. Share number, you. yeah. Patek sir, share the number so that they can I, speak I on video call. Let her join. We meanwhile will take one question. Yeah, Subha, my boss, Karu. Yeah, I you can ask, ask but some, please uh, be, be brief. Sir, uh, some uh, technical question. Sir. It has to be some technical question. I think you have repeated. No, no, he has already spoken for asking. more than two hours. You can't engage him for a long time. Uh, no, no, that thing engaging, sir. It uh. is basically uh. when in his first attack, when he was, I mean, uh, trying to attack the runway and particularly telecom towers or telecom office of the runway or a ATC, something like that. That time he said that right side, the downside, there was a saber which was flying towards him. And at the same time, there was a escort also behind him. Why the Sabre was not attacked him from the undercarriage point of it when it was right in front of him? That is point number one. Point number two, that is basically when the trial uh, or a demo attack was done on an airfield, but the vertical uh, drilling like uh, kind of an operation of uh, making a runway totally damaged. Why the Pakistanis were not noted it and we kept prepared for that kind of attack next time. The third point which I was trying to ask is that our, the, our SASO has asked the Canberras to fly and see the reconnaissance of the after impact of their drilling attack, rather the vertical downflow attack. Why not what recce flight was conducted even once before that as per the narration? And the fourth point which I was trying to know is that the kind of an attack which was done in the Second World War is the Pearl Harbor that is Tora Tora Tora. Perhaps so. Uh, if my, our Air Marshal Sir must be definitely having this answer, I mean, this, my small little doubts. If, if possible, he can explain this. Now, you ask so, you ask so many questions, I don't remember even. To answer. Uh, sir, one, one, I will one, repeat. Remind one, 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 Please ask that the first is, one. First one is that That's when you are trying to attack the telecom towers, etc., on the runway, first attack of yours, that time there was Sabre, which was the 
uh, under your side of right side of yours at a low, low level which was getting chased by our escort that time that sabre has an uh, chance of climbing and attacking to you, you with a, around uh, you can say roughly about uh, 10 o'clock uh, turn you can say 10 o'clock attack which he could have done with the climbing why he has not done was he scared of his air exposure of the body towards the escort or is it something like that or that fellow was not in, in sufficient knowledge of attacking at 10 o'clock at your undercarriage no the point is this that i was attacking i was in the dive yeah. and my speed was accelerating and he yeah. was at right angles to me from the right yes sir in other words I uh, that's what 10 o'clock i said sir 10 o'clock was, no no yeah, 10 o'clock no yes. no 10 o'clock i'm talking about different context okay it was not 10 o'clock to me it was right angle to me and he was just yes. three o'clock before i saw the yeah. mig behind him i wondered what is this blighter doing rushing around low level and not attacking us so i i thought myself and then as i looked further behind him i found yeah. this mig behind him he was running for his life uh, not ah, that's me. what escort was chasing him so uh-huh. the second question which i asked is that your demo attack to sasso that yes your attack will be definitely done so that is the vertical lower uh, firing with almost like a drilling the runway so in that when the pakistanis have experienced that in the evening time of that uh, demo run rather runway of uh, non importance or maybe some small runway why they have not taken the precaution for that kind of uh, innovative attack for the next r- runways which you have done second time also very 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 a smart question and it should have been noticed if there were indian air force But Thank you, Pakistan sir. That is the one thing. <laughs> in Pakistan, in Pakistan, Air Force, by then, their morale was so very down in yeah. the shoe yeah. that they couldn't think of except survival at that stage. So, sir, now and the third question, I, sir. To, yeah, to, yeah. Hold on. And yeah. since it was late in the afternoon, by the time they would have got the information from an yeah. unmanned airfield that the attack yeah. has been done and what damage has been done, yeah. it was too much an effort required. and probably they waited till next morning and before that we were over them again right sir the third question which i asked sir when the sasso when he took the initiative to sue the recce flight or reconnaissance flight of with the cameras to see the damage taken place at that uh, at your attack the, the demo attack and uh, why the recce was not done prior to that to know the certain areas of the targets this also surprised us yeah I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. But that when I was briefed by the station commander at Guwahati, yeah. the first day of the attack, and I found Second. there were no target information. Yeah. In the ops orders, I asked the same question. He tried yeah. to get this information from headquarters. Yes, he had. Yes. Yeah, I'll but tell our. They uh, failed to get it. Okay, I'll tell our. And right, I also sir. mentioned I that one you. officer who interrogated one yeah. of the Mufti Bani chap to find out the yeah. same information had the information. but this yeah. inf- information probably got logged into a different department and file and didn't come in view of the planning staff my explanation only is that all no one yeah, told yeah. me and yeah. one day is no more he died a few days back you are perfectly right sir it convincing answer sir now the fourth point which i have see similar attacks which i have seen in the pearl harbor in the tora 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 operation when it was conducted in the second world war similar attacks been done have you noticed that one somewhere in the background of your mind sir well if you ask me frankly i don't know anything about that campaign or what the happened tora tora tora, tora, tora. tora. Okay, okay. i not okay, studied now, that sir. and i know that pearl harbor huh. was attacked extensively and it produced some results right sir so now one main question sir when the, there was a sufficient time before the war took place the real attack of the 3rd december or 4th december when you were doing it when it was known to that the target information and the map reading was not properly prepared for your ground attack in the time why there was no spnh was conducted by the indian air force with a kind of a when muktiwani muktiwani defected defense people were available why this spnh was not properly conducted or not conducted at all sir i would say it might have been conducted but the information is not with really the right people to convey to us okay and, uh, okay. okay and and besides besides that also that uh, uh, this particular information was necessary for us and we true. wanted to so badly yes. and uh, it is the first requirement of planning for an attack that you know exactly where the target is what kind of target is 
and what you expect to see and how to tackle it. Going sir, on, uh, uh, Madam Benegal has come on the call, sir. Okay, please, uh, my wife. I would like to. Yeah, uh, Ma uh, uh, Madam, you can uh, talk to our uh, AVM sir. I'll get around the line. Yeah. yeah. Firstly, uh, good evening, Madam. I am uh, Sergeant Rao. Good evening. Thank you so much. So we are really inspired by the excellent uh, experiences shared by our uh, AVM sir. Really. So uh, thank you, and and Madam Benegal is also on the call. You can talk to her, Madam. Uh, Welcome, uh, Madam Meera ba Benegal, Madam. You can speak, Madam. Uh, our uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Bishnoi is uh, Madam is on the call. Hello. Hello, uh, Mrs. Benegal. Can you hear me, please? Uh, she is on the call, Madam. Okay. Hello, Mrs. Benegal. How are you? I am fine, thank you. Uh, it's so nice to hear you after so many years. Where is she, Madam, now? Bangalore. Bangalore. So nice ah. to see you. So nice after so many years. How are you? Yeah, so uh, may I know you are uh, Mrs. Vishnoi? Oh, yes, Lamenti Vishnoi. Ah, very good. Uh, so, I'm so happy that I could hear Vishnoi. Only last or tired. So I, if I was at home, I would have able to lie down. Okay. Uh, I was in the next flat because mm. I didn't know how to put it on. I okay. thought I uh, asked my son, so I sat to hear the home. Only the end little I missed. Okay. Uh, okay. So how are the children? Uh, what is your daughter doing? My, my daughter and son. Yeah. My daughter is the elder one. She's in Bombay. Mm. I can't walk very fast or anything. Mm. You know? That's why it took time to get it done. You know? mm. But they're looking good. They're looking I'm very good. good. <laughs> I have two children. My daughter is in uh, uh, Mumbai. My mm. son is next door. I just moved to this flat a couple of days back. Okay. Because I have a children now. You know? How many children do you have? One daughter and she has one son. Oh, my uh, daughter has two children and my granddaughter got married in uh, November. On okay. The, oh, uh, lovely. 21st, 1st of November there in New York. Nice to see you. Really, really nice. Really. I'm feeling so happy. Feeling younger. Looking at you, I, I go back that many years in life. Yeah. Very much to me. Thank you. Very, very, very nice to see you. are in Bangalore permanently? Oh, yes, yeah, in Bangalore. Okay. Really nice. God bless you. Lovely. Madam Vishnu, a small yeah. question to you. A small question if I can ask. Yes, please. So now you attended our function. It was a great honor uh, along with our sir. Yes. How did you feel about our function on 31st October in Hyderabad? That was wonderfully conducted. Very, very well done. I, I in fact, thought uh, I, I don't know. I, I never thought of it that way that you people will get together and do this. So this was first surprise and the way it was managed, very, very well done. You know, I was I was telling my daughter that they were so well geared the day for the, the last day when my husband couldn't walk because of his knee problem. You secured a brand new wheelchair for him to be there. I, I mean, that really touched my heart. How much effort can all put in? That was extremely good of you, really. Thank you. It was a wonderful program. Very nice. So and that, God that is bless one thing. you all. Thank you, madam. Uh, finally, so now we had the glorious story of uh, Valor of our sir. In fact, uh, we were so thrilled and excited and inspired the way he handled that uh, challenging circumstances and crucially winning the war for us by his leadership qualities. So how do you feel about him and his success, madam? Uh, Mr. Raj, you will be surprised to know I'm only hearing these stories now after 50 years. After My God. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never known anything about it. <laughs> no, I'll be sharing the link so that you would know the total story, how, how he spoke, uh, what all he did. <laughs> so now, of course, with people coming for interviews and all, I get to hear some of it. Right, but, well, I, I really, since I'd never heard about it, I never thought about it, that's it. All that I knew. That he didn't want to be interfered with his job and he didn't stop me from doing what I wanted to do. That's it. <laughs> no, you are so fortunate, madam, to get such a husband in your life, which but, for which nation, the entire nation, peace proud of his uh, efforts. But uh, he is lucky. He had boys under him who were ready to lay of their course, life of for Of course, him. madam. Thank uh, you for and, that uh, acknowledgement. 
Yes, but as a, a Marshal Masand, I was texting to him and he says, "Ma'am, CEO be to ऐसा होना चाहिए जिसके लिए life दे हम." वो तो है ना that's that's what matters. <laughs> Very well said. <laughs> so this is all that I know about it. Okay, madam. So well said. Okay, thank you. Thank you very, so much. Very very kind of you. You people have been really extremely good. and you manage the show very well and the other thing i feel proud is to bring it out to the public uh, what happened in 71 war yes, which ma'am. was very very important yes madam we really we didn't know all these stories even we served in the air force and until now unless we heard from the great heroes so it's really inspiring that you you have honored them all they, whatever they did i think you have honored them much more than that yeah, they deserve much <laughs> more <laughs> yes they deserve much more and we are really honored in time. honored yes thank we you. feel we are proud thank we feel honored you. and we god bless you all thank this you madam thank you so much thank, thank you so thank much you. thank you sir bishnu sir finally uh, would like to say something I think it is almost uh, two and a half hours. I think many many are there to ask questions, but I think. Uh, Look, hey, if you have time, I have time. Now we have had your uh, real life story, story of valor, grit, and determination, and uh, so many other things. So, what message would like to give our all air veterans on the call, sir? Message. Well. Yeah, message. Sir. The, the message for the veterans is: firstly, I would thank them on behalf of the nation for doing what they did during the war. and you know after that second message is for the families and children i thank them for supporting their husbands fathers and uh, other relations for towards the war effort because without your support and prompting nothing could have been achieved and the last but not the last is what was was to happen has happened and let's enjoy its glory and live happily so finally sir did you feel that you got the honor that you deserve or appreciation from air force for all your uh, uh, display of valor and professionalism sir i would say i got far more than that because what i sir. did any would anyone else would have done in my place because we are love of nation equally and we were trained by such an efficient organization like sir. indian air force and we owe a great deal to them of course sir everybody we all owe a great deal of gratitude to the air force so on behalf of all the air veterans association i would like to sum up saying that so thank you so much sir thank you very much it was a nice session and i enjoyed it i wish we had more time to talk yes sir. because you make me believe certain things which i didn't know about myself earlier <laughs> thank you so much very kind of nice talking to all of you thank you sir thank you so much